Welcome to Everyday Linux User. For the past month, I have been using OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is the rolling release of OpenSUSE. In this video, I'm going to let you know how things have gone, what I liked, what I didn't like, and I will summarize with the suitability of OpenSUSE for new users generally, and also OpenSUSE Tumbleweed for new users. My video earlier on in this month uh, probably gave you a little bit of an insight as to my views on Tumbleweed for new users as it provided five reasons Tumbleweed isn't suitable for new users. That doesn't mean, however, that OpenSUSE itself isn't suitable. So let's get started. To obtain OpenSUSE, you have to go to OpenSUSE.org and you will see the two versions highlighted. If you hover over either of the versions, you will see options for more info and for installation. When you click on the install link, it sends you to an overview page. And it says, with Tumbleweed, you don't have to take difficult decisions about things you value, either freedom or safety, either control or security, technology or stability. Tumbleweed lets you have your cake and eat it too. To download OpenSUSE, you just have to click on the download tab. There are offline and network images available for 32 and 64-bit PCs, ARM servers, PowerPC servers and IBM Z systems and Linux One. The offline images uh, enable you to install OpenSUSE without internet access after you have downloaded the image, whereas the network image will download the operating system and install it as part of the installation process. If you have a stable internet connection, then the network image is the one to use. There are live images available, which is something I hadn't spotted previously. They reside under the alternative downloads. You will find live images for GNOME, KDE and XFCE, as well as a rescue CD and there are various virtual images and cloud images as well. Installation is reasonably straightforward. It isn't as simple as Mint or Ubuntu, but it's okay. When you boot to the image, it gives you an installation option, and then after a bit of hardware detection, it asks for your ESS ID or network name. You then have to enter the authentication type, and assuming you need a password to log into your network, it will ask for your password. At this point, it then showed me a message that it needed to download a boot image and restart. At which point, you have to enter the ESS ID and password again. Uh, this is a bit annoying and perhaps a bit overly convoluted. Eventually, though, you get to a welcome screen and the rest of the process is nice and linear. Choose your installation language and keyboard layout. Select the repositories you want to use. The defaults are usually fine for this. Choose your desktop environment and then you are on to the dreaded partitioning bit. Now I clicked the guided setup and it actually went very smoothly. I simply picked the drive to install to, chose what I wanted to do with my existing Windows partition and what to do with other partitions. You can choose to enable LVM and you can also encrypt your disk if you wish to do so. You are then asked to choose the file system with BTRFS as the default and you can choose to enable snapshots, which is recommended with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Finally, you are able to choose whether you want a separate swap partition. It then gives you the suggested partitions and you can either accept them and move on or try again or use the expert partitioner, which probably isn't recommended for new users. With partitioning complete, there are only a couple of steps remaining, which include setting your time zone and setting up a user. The installation takes place and when you reboot you have a shiny new version of OpenSUSE. Now what you will see here is a customised version of the GNOME desktop and not the standard GNOME desktop that comes with OpenSUSE. You can check out my video about customising GNOME if you want to customise your GNOME desktop as well. My first task when setting up a new distro is to check the hardware works and I can confirm I had no issues with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or printing. I did have an issue with video playback and the recommendation here is to add in the Pac-Man repository using YAST and make sure all the GStreamer libraries are installed. I still have issues with the GNOME media player however as it will often play the audio but the video lags behind. I've got around this by installing VLC and everything with that works perfectly well. OpenSUSE comes with a decent set of apps including all the standard GNOME tools, LibreOffice and other things you'd expect but it's also easy to install what you need via the GNOME software managers as flatbacks are enabled as well. As a system, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed has actually been very stable throughout the course of the month. There are a few little quirks that I'm not sure I like, however. 
For instance, sometimes when shutting down, it doesn't shut down, but leaves you at a terminal login screen, and it won't actually let you do anything. You have to hold the power button in to get it to turn off. And how you perform updates in Tumbleweed when you are using GNOME isn't as obvious as I would like it to be. For instance, the packages appear to update automatically, which is good. And then sometimes it will tell you there are updates to install. And so you click install and they update. Then you will try and install an application that you want to install using the YAS software tool. And it won't let you because something is locking the package system. And you either have to wait or forcefully ask it to stop the other thing. The documentation for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed also says you should use Zipper for performing updates. Now I mentioned all this in my video about reasons new users shouldn't use Tumbleweed and the responses um, I received were this guy doesn't know what he's doing but surely this is the point. This video is for new users or for the everyday Linux user. Now I've been using Linux for over 20 years and if it isn't clear for somebody like me then how can you expect other new users or your average user to get it? Another thing I don't particularly like about Tumbleweed is this. Yes, this happens. When you reboot, it will say installing updates in a similar way to Windows. And I really don't like that. OpenSUSE does have a decent set of configuration tools under the name YAST. And you can configure hardware, change language settings, time zones, networks, partitions, install hypervisors, etc. My overall view on OpenSUSE is that everything works and it is stable at the point of use and nothing bad has happened to me during this month. I haven't had to spend hours researching something that is broken or anything like that. I've been able to get on with my work and also create videos and I haven't been interrupted by little things along the way. However, I do think it is overly complicated for the new user. And when I say that, what am I comparing it to? It would be easy to say Linux Mint and I think the OpenSUSE guys would say not our target audience, which would be fair enough. Ubuntu then. Ubuntu is by comparison a far easier beast to tackle. I would put OpenSUSE in the mid-tier category of distributions for more intermediate users alongside Fedora and Debian. New users of these distros are more likely to trip up during the installation phase because for instance OpenSUSE asks for an ESS ID and users don't necessarily know what that means. For instance, Debian asks for all sorts of interesting questions like your domain name and Fedora's installer just isn't that straightforward to follow. Installation aside, I would say Debian and Fedora are easier to use than OpenSUSE. If I install Debian with GNOME and add Flatbex, I know exactly how it will behave. And the same can be said with Fedora. With OpenSUSE, I'm not sure. With Fedora, you also have the atomic versions such as Knoit and Silverblue, which are perfect for new users. So to sum up, I don't hate it. And I could use OpenSUSE going forward, but to be perfectly honest, it isn't my favourite. For new users, I would say choose Leap over Tumbleweed, but for me, it's time to move on and start the next month on. What will it be? If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and all will be revealed soon on Everyday Linux User. Thank you for watching.